Did you know that you can vote on all new Anime Wins content that gets covered? Did you know that you can get early access to videos too? You can do all that and more. Plus keep the channel going strong over on my Patreon, link below. It is so sick and so like this anime to give us a physical representation of the magic she clearly cast around her neck to keep his attack from touching her. Two wins, firstly can't show it, but she removed the body tool he was using. His hand is on the end of it. Secondly, I loved the lore and realism of how much weaker demons have got through not being constantly at war. Just like adventurers, I'm guessing, this naturally weakens them. She is so cool! I can't get over it! She took another limb and then BOOM! No talking! She is awesome! It's another new video, unless you're watching a future compilation that is, and so let the praise continue for animating so much of the scenes already. Again, new video, so being nice to animals is always a win. They then go and give us the same street, but with newly animated people walking through it. I'm in love! One thing I'm a big fan of is character development over time. It's why I love One Piece so much, and they're doing it here. He didn't kill the dragon and totally change. That takes time. Good how she says this, having the mentality of the heroes of yore. It also builds a further image in my mind of them sometimes maybe having to do similar things during their 10 year stint. Also though, you cannot tell me that this doesn't sound like when you come across the ice troll in The Witcher 3 on the islands and everyone is taken out of the beach. Same vibe in the music, no? Oh, bless his little heart! It's so good that he's not still suspecting her. All signs kind of point to him and his people, so at the very least, I'm glad he's asking questions and going this far. And then he couldn't worm his way out of it either, so it all comes to light. We know what the sides are, let's do this! <laughs> Ooh, a very good start of a battle here with what I call fresh movements. Nothing repeated to ease the animation workload. <laughs> really nice looking half rotating shot. <laughs> Sadly, it seems like he's likely being taken out, but credit for the clever way of attacking there. That's very unique. <laughs> How she could tell it was her in spite of the cloak, and how Feren was clever and careful in not speaking to them here in the open. Love how she takes everything in her stride! She's really grown on me so much since the first journey, happily giving words of wisdom and encouragement to them here when they needed it most. Stuff like this in anime never fails to really tickle me. Peak! <laughs> that little smile from her, you know she fully trusts in their abilities to win here. But also have another because I was suddenly stricken with a love for the characters and their team as a whole. Really, really fond of them now. A very good job is done with the music and the visuals, the vibe and the tone to really make this appear creepy. Think this is what I was talking about during part one where I said in the city felt like everything had its place or was in place. Like where they came up here is perfect for where the mansion and bridge should be. Even these two alone really make for quite the team. Considering that's animation done at quite a distance, it's very smooth and of a high quality. A stunning view of the town at night!
Was good to see him in actual combat from back in the day, seeing how strong he was. The ultra high quality on his eye. Really says everything about her old master that she saw a little speck of life struggling in the winter cold and wind and cast a barrier to protect it, just like she did on this town. Half the win is because I'm glad they finally found him and can now help, and the other half is the sadness in that a part of him thought it might be his son, even though he's been gone for 10 years. What can only really be described as an incredible amount of animation poured into him, cutting the rope in various ways. Oh, I really didn't expect them to come back so soon. Everything is now coming to a head and I'm so hyped. What a great character trope, in spite of being scared, terrified even, he's angered by the notion of being looked over at the same time. Enough to spur him into action here. <laughs> he already landed a decent first tip, more so than the other dude managed. <laughs> First of all, the lad is growing on me leaps and bounds. He's fast, he's strong, and he's quick to think during battle and defending his most important body parts here. <laughs> Secondly, oh my goodness, that was so well done! In fact, it's getting Max wins for choosing to go slow motion. You know she attacks so fast as he couldn't even fully lock eyes with her in that time. Again, two different wins. I adore how much has been put into the magic system itself. Like it's a big deal and it's very expansive. That is so creative. Like I said, I adore it. But also because just prior to this, he stopped the demon girl attacking in order to ask her about the spell. I like that curiosity. He's genuinely impressed. Clever girl earning the anime a big bonus win for not doing the age-old anime trope of allowing your enemy time to chat with you for half an hour whilst they regenerate or whatever. They decide to leave with the hostage, but look how she keeps an eye on them whilst leaving. So good, the attention to detail. Finding out that they had actually fought each other once long ago. Won't show it, but they display tons of bodies, likely from the battle that had just finished. Lots of details there. Also, her looking totally badass here too. Oh my goodness, that music as well, totally deserving of a big shout out. It sounds so good and gets the blood pumping. So, so no it's so good that she comes across via the very first few episodes as carefree, kind of ditzy sometimes, but in reality, in her past she was a demon wrecking ball! Such a great way to end the episode! It's no surprise given the ultra high quality of this series, but the internal set design is gorgeous here, looking truly lived in and unique to this household. <laughs> Glad this is addressed and goes back to a win from the first quarter where I mentioned how the heroes have been forgotten to a degree. Very personal win, I'll grant you, but Eiko from Kiss X Sis. <laughs> I love that anime. <laughs> Great looking unique combat views, not just the standard face on, attack and dodge, but also how they're only using CGI when masses of armor are attacking and not all of the time. This moment as she carefully watches and notes that they're all wearing a pendant of some kind. The description of how her horrible type of magic actually works and it's fairly in depth too. But also how the studio continuously uses unique kinds of artistic styles in these moments. This lovely dodge and attack from her, but also finding out the weakness that's likely about to be exploited here. What a brilliant way of showing that it was his grandfather who is shown here, who had such incredible will, he could overcome her for a moment. 
Decent way of showing and not telling that she's not immune to damage as this comes super close to her. It's subtle, but the way she suspects who these fallen warriors once were in life, cleaning the dirt from part of the armor and seeing the dents and scratches upon it. I'm such a freak for loving tiny details like this, but I just love lore so much. So finding out the church has its own little smaller barrier around it is so damn cool to me. So many frames I had to show it and then talk over it. Must have been an incredible pain to animate that. Showing his growth in terms of his bravery, he could have slinked away, could have stayed there, but instead he goes out to face them. Okay. I slightly misjudged it, but I'm still keeping the last win. He's still braving the outside where they are, after all, but still, that was so good. <laughs> you know the drill, two wins. First up to the bat is how they again put tons and tons of frames into this moment. Insane. Second to the bat is how quickly she understood what had happened and took action. <laughs> Bloody brilliant to suddenly pull an attack out of that scene like that! Also though, another one for being anti-anime yet again. They had this whole plan. He was going to do A, she was going to do B, and instead they're attacked up here. Almost never happens in anime. Oh my god, this anime is stupidly great, I swear. What an attack that was! Unexpected! This sort of thing never happens in anime. Someone actually addressed it. Oh, it's so good. You can see the whole thing happening in the background behind him. God, I love it. I'd describe this as stupidly involved, like so much deeper than most anime. He was angry that she got the jump on him. He thinks he is better than everyone else. He didn't miss her, he wanted to miss. Using this excellent flashback to essentially tell us that very likely she will be able to fire off her spell into him before he can attack her. All because of her words to Fern back then. Take one here as well for the nicely added touch of her only using her good arm to hold the stave. That's exactly what I was talking about during the first quarter where I mentioned how excellent it is that the anime has me on the edge for magic battles just the same as normal ones. That's rare for me. These shots animating through the scene is a difficult thing to animate, and yet it's smooth as butter. Speaking of nice touches, having these two battles take place so close together that one affects the other is so awesome. Him continuing to get up and fight in spite of his injuries, at least that prior win about his bravery is fully valid now. Not content with win number 297, they only go and do it again! <laughs> the music and the animation alone are enough to get it wins here, but it's made even greater by how the visuals are done. All of the angles and movements taking it to the next level. <laughs> Rotating shot during a battle like it's not a big deal! So much credit to the studio as well for deciding to animate the whole thing by hand and not using any CGI. <laughs> the amazing moment he begins to understand that a battle of attrition is not going his way. As if having a big battle and doing all of the great animation and whatnot for it wasn't enough, we're getting two battles, plus my boy got hurt, so now I'm real nervous.
A five second long series of fresh attacks where absolutely nothing is repeated, and again with another three second long one. Actually getting a solid reason how she's able to copy his moves. This is really one of those kinds of anime where damage is taken seriously. It lasts into the future. Like, as much as I love Jojo, he's not going to be all healed up right after this fight. The lesson he imparted to his student here in the past and what fuels him to get back up and back into the fight once again. I'm just a big fan of how they do it really. It's so elegant. How gorgeous that looked as a scene and it plays into my prior win where I mentioned the two battles being so close that they can affect one another. So sick! We learned that whilst powerful, she's not wielding that axe in any way that can end him in one go, unlike what he can do. Boom! There we have it, a final strike before she moves that ends the battle in his favour. Second boom, there we have another, a final strike when he took his eyes off her for a second that ends her battle too. So damn good, truly. This little scene from the past showing a drop of lore, more of her master and a better connection to her hatred of demons and where and why that stemmed from. <laughs> I obviously don't understand exactly, but clearly they found a way to make a little mana go very far. But for me, the win is for him freaking out about it. I like that. Justice is done. Getting to see how long demons have been a problem. Over 1,000 years, really. Plus an elf village destroyed by him and his forces, but at least they fought back. Plus different styles of homes on display I liked. Also getting to see how these two first met, I have been wondering that for a while now, glad it was covered. By the way, no win here, but it seems she's a human, not an elf. I just couldn't see her ears and assumed it for some reason, so yeah, slight correction as tons of people told me in the comments. Been saying it a while now, but the slow expansion of the lore, the introduction of new creatures and enemies and monsters has done so well. It's funny how they're still making the same mistakes a thousand years into the future and now present. That's literally how they both failed their recent battles. I enjoy how, instead of making it some overly complicated spell they use or something else, instead it's as simple as hiding your mana store so you appear weaker than you really are. Sensei. Pretty cool that ancient humans built their cities and towns to kind of look like our Romans did. They go one step further and give the people Rome looking clothing too. The basic reason is given here behind why demons don't or can't mask their magic. It's because the mere idea of it goes contrary against their very existence and nature. So it's never been done. Oh, it's kind of sad to suddenly now see her having grown quite old. This whole scene let us learn a lot more about who her sensei was, and also at the end here, why she wanted her to remain low key, and it did work. It's even still working today in the present for her. Just a quick win for showing that when she did die, she followed through with the spell to surround her grave with the flowers as she asked for. Also an equally quick win for a lovely looking village during the day and night here. Fully animating yet another montage of the years following her master's death. Oh, 
Oh, I bet if you were watching this and were thinking of Anime Wins, you were like, Oh god, he's gonna love this moment, and I do. Getting to see the first time they all met her. I kind of weirdly assumed it was like Kona Super and they met in an inn or something. Yeah. He really was an exceptional man and hero, wasn't he? In his gut, he could tell there was something strong about her that no one else could for a thousand years. The very brief images that make up the gist of their long journey that play out for around half a second. Them fighting the same looking dragon from earlier, fighting Quoll, battling Aura, and the castle. I love how in this moment she is so incredibly sure of herself that she has won, that all she need do now is draw a sword and go over and finish the battle. She cannot move, it's done. Oh, this is even better than I thought the author would do it. I figured Furen would strike when close, but no, it's already overpowering her mana. Showing this bit because the music is fantastic and now, taking into account all the prior wins, I can call the official soundtrack varied because this track is unlike anything before it. The voice actress and the animators together nailed this scene to really bring across the now only slightly veiled terror she's feeling at knowing that very likely her demise is swiftly coming. The full showcasing of her true manner! Ah, so brutal, but I love it! What an end! Take a final win here for the episode 2 because she pretty much immediately did as told. It showed that she didn't have the same free will so many honourable humans had before who fell to her. I liked that. There's actually quite a serene calm and beauty about the aftermath of this battle. <laughs> First of all, I really like that music. It reminds me of Braveheart a lot. Secondly, it's good to see how she learned from her prior mistake, or at least how Himmel wasn't too happy with how she'd blasted the hero's armors apart back then. <laughs> Genuinely lovely, wholesome, down-to-earth way of ending the battle as she praises them in a very real way for the damn fine job both of them did. Made me very happy seeing that. <laughs> With that music and his reaction, that right away brought a tear to my eye. He gets closure, he gets his son back, he gets to put him to rest. That was very, very good that. <laughs> We've heard the story before, but seeing him all crying in the background like that still got me laughing. That made me laugh harder than I have in a very long time. He almost sounds like Saitama, oddly enough. <laughs> More for the follow-up to the joke. For context, he says, you won't be thrown in prison here for talking disrespectfully. He only said it so he'd escape, and then this happens. What genius even thinks of this? Removing him from the room via magic. It's not animated, but the song makes it a still lovely montage, and it was nice seeing that they spent quite some time there. Then getting to see everyone being put to rest in a respectful way, honouring them. Already doing a good job of setting us up for the next leg of the journey and I for one cannot wait. Oh, 
Out of nowhere, dropping lore on us. Interesting lore as well, since it'd make sense in a world like this, that there'd be people grouped together handling magic in one way or another. The realism behind why Ferren hasn't got a certificate, because she's lived so long that they keep on changing the process that she eventually got bored of it at some point. Also, how they designed these castles so much like our real world ones, where you're able to travel between areas and also, if needs be, fight from them. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's so sick to learn about a large magical city that exists in the north, in spite of all of the dangers. There's a bastion of humanity and magic still there. God, I'm a nerd! As if it weren't good enough already, we didn't get to see it on a map! That's a nice touch that isn't often mentioned in these kinds of anime, that more soldiers can easily die from the wilds and the weather than through actual combat. Look at Napoleon in Russia! Speaking of realism, like from the last win, I like how magic isn't the ultimate force. It can't do literally every single thing, as we learn if they carried him via magic, he'd be blown away. One of those nicely added touches I enjoy so much, the notion that someone built an emergency cabin for travellers caught out in the snow and keeps it stocked up. Okay, so a few wins here. Firstly, I did not expect this to be the sight they witnessed upon entering. Secondly, it's of course Dio from Jojo, the guy voices nearly every anime, I swear. He's so talented though, it's incredible. Lastly, goodness me, he's an elf! That's rare! I tell you, this really puts into perspective just how insanely rare it is that elves meet one another. Giving a win purely because in his state of delirium, where he sees a nice tasty dessert, he also catches a glimpse of his master giving him a solid thumbs up back there. I thought it might be the girls who do it, but no, it's him. <laughs> this guy has the best reactions in this. <laughs> oh god, I laughed for like a solid 60 seconds of that. That's so subtle and so well done because he knows that whole event was 80 odd years ago, but she's lived over a thousand years. So cool, she did that. But what else? That's very interesting. Really happy to see that they went back to giving us fully animated montages after the last still one. It was also good to see how they bonded together in numerous ways, via knowledge and via strength. <laughs> That's kind of sad. On top of that, we learn that he's much older than her too, which is shocking. I don't think I'll ever grow bored of seeing how her events in the present reflect those from her past. Plus, it's always a treat seeing the old heroes in their prime. The fact that he could tell this when so many others couldn't is incredible. My god, the visuals in this one speak to me on a seriously profound level. Oh, such a nice addition! The anime, the story, the visuals, the voice acting and the music all combined never fail to make me tear up in moments like this. Have one more for their shared goodbyes. Nice ending that. Sleepy walking for Ren. Kedo Hora, Tewa, I did see. Oh, oh, what does she go say? We must. She doesn't trust him not to be handsy or something. I love the way they do these scenes, I swear. All of the animation poured into this scene and getting to see what set Himmel on the path of becoming a hero in the first place. That's 
that's amazing. It just tells us that they've known each other since they were youngsters, and that very likely Himmel was a lot older than him since he called him a brat. I mean, come on. That's just beautiful. It. Poor guy. <laughs> he just wants to help. Yet another village looking absolutely different to everything else. Lovely way they did the walls too. Oh my goodness, she's incredibly adorable, no? Bless her heart, clearly trying to stay on tiptoes to reach closer to her height. Wouldn't be an episode of Ren if they didn't give us another view of the village immediately! Oh, also, before I forget, Chika from Love is War. That's their amazingly funny friend on the student council who did the dance. My god, she's nearly as painfully adorable as Chopper from One Piece! Nothing but smooth as warm butter left outside in the summer heat to go all funky animation. Don't eat that butter! I love the faith she has in him and the growing faith. She knew he'd be okay after that surprise attack and able to stop its attack on her. She's testing him, helping him grow too. Then at the same time she fully trusted Fern to protect her with a spell so she could work up the finishing move. Okay, that's a brilliant and truly unexpected plot twist, I must say. The fact that even whilst likely devastated by being unable to wield the sword, he still says this afterwards. Thought that was an interesting notion too, that after generations they become legends, and who they were as people becomes lost. This was referenced in a book I'm reading again called Legend by David Gemmell. No walking away from the village on the spot! Okay, it's official, it's now overtaken the first season of Jobless Reincarnation already in terms of unique looking cities and towns and villages. I continue to be blown away by the quality and detail and dedication. A new unique looking inn, but also one that is totally gorgeous at the same time! It's good how we can now see how much closer they have gotten that she's annoyed at having not known it was his birthday until the very day. How well the reflections are done in this one! Two wins, firstly you can see how much he means to Feren as well via her reaction here, but also the reaction itself with its childlike excitement that was just so damn cute that it had to get its own win. Such a creepy gift, but she's so oddly proud of it. You can just see it in her face. What she does with the potion afterwards, they do a good job of covering up everything too, but still, made me laugh. Learning that the lovely Mr. Stark has been spending pretty much his entire day so far going from one person to another and helping out, says so much about him and it's all good. Sometimes I see visuals like this and hear the music and I'm carried away into pure bliss for a moment. Oh, oh god! <laughs> so unexpected! She thought he was truly enjoying the landscape, smiled at him, and then that! 
Small win, but again, how they give us so many different shots of the insides of each town and village too. Some of the context is missing as I can't show too much, but I felt this should get a win for being a nice bonding experience, but also a learning one. Sad he's never had a gift in his life too. Really glad to be seeing more of Stark's background. It's one we've known little to nothing about so far. Kurt Vander from the Trails from Cold Steel games! Oh, he was so sweet! He thought he'd get into trouble and instead he said good job for not losing focus prior to the strike. He was a good older brother. Now getting to see the event he spoke about so long ago, or rather his master did, makes you wonder if his brother might still be alive though. Her words meant a great deal in this moment and I liked her smile, getting to see more of him than before she probably felt closer to him in a way. <laughs> that. <laughs> Seeing the gift she bought him. Nicer for Ren to not only remember this detail, but also to do the cooking for them whilst they were out. Learning that back then, without saying anything, he was praising young Stark for a year of hard work, and he did the same for the party of heroes, and that was his gift, bless him. Oh, and his brother did it for him all those years ago too, and meant it as a gift. Oh, that got me. Nigero, Stark. Omae wa ikirunda. And that certainly didn't help stop the tears. He remembers he didn't flee as a coward. His brother told him to run, to protect his little brother. The amount of frames poured into his own crying and then doing as he was told in fleeing. Oh. This anime means a great deal to me. It really does. It's something special. Nice to get a little laugh. After all the tears just now, I appreciate that. One more to end the episode, him asking what it does, being called a perv, and he's so confused by it. They have a good habit of even being able to make something out of tiny events like this. It draws you in with its wording, its simplicity and mood. This whole conversation, he's been in this bog. So random! She's so mean! All because his hand is dirty! <laughs> These little reactions. He's happy he's not going to get told off, and she pulls this face. Bunchurati from Jojo's Golden Wind, and of course Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. Also, another new village. Pretty awesome that they can fly, but even better that it drains their mana super quick, which explains why they're not flying all over the place all the time. Kind of shocking! Obviously he'll be okay, but the way he says it sounds awful, and of course that reaction! I have no idea why that's funny, but it really is that he got a tub that friggin' small! 
この方を見てあげなさい。カコイン、フォン・ジョジョイ・スタードス・クルセイダーズ。じゃ、これでチャラだな。あ、スナップ、I thought this might be a long drawn out quest to get ingredients and it's over in seconds. These are the kinds of images that utterly wow me when I see them, like legit paintings. フリーレン様、今下からシュタルク様の悲鳴のような声が。You ever see someone look so physically snuggly and warm under a blanket it makes you feel that way randomly? Mukashi no Hanashi that they tend the row. Ima Sarada, Freele. Boktach to Ishoni, Mao Tauso. Ima Sarada, Torega Dosta, Freele. Boka Ima no Hanashi or Stater. How these parallels are drawn all the time between her past and her present? Yapari Watashi Zain no Koto Kirida. だから意地でも仲間に誘うことにした。え、なんで ？I never would have thought that the comedy would be so high tier and keep on getting better and better. The reactions are perfection. The voice actors help the comedy along and visually looks funny too. Fern being able to get all of the items back for everyone like a legend and did so for free. シュタレク様、来てください。See what I'm saying about the great level of comedy? Nicely goes back to a prior win in the first quarter. You can see how much life is put into the scenes here. Ano hirai, mai nichi no yoni ore o kanyu shite kuru. Made me laugh that they're watching him, following him, waving at him to try and have him join their group. Toshi ue no onei san ka. Shoujiki son na jouhou atte mo na. Her understanding that, in spite of her look, she's definitely the oldest woman around. This tiny thing. Get out of here with that. What's with all the comedy this episode? How come the comedy is just the very best though? This, <laughs> totally this. Himmel, when he used it, he was shaking so much that he lost his strength. Himmel! Okay, I'm going on record. This is by far the most comedy-packed episode to date, and the most funny anime I've seen in a long time. Are you going to die? I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Oh. No, that was unexpectedly sad. Three years he said he'd return, and now it's ten. There's a real sadness there to him. There's that clever storytelling element at play again, where she says it's only been ten years, and makes a good point. If you don't try to see him now, you'll regret it. What if I had left then? It's a good point. Appropriately aging all of the characters. Always enjoy seeing that. A true older brother there, and it's worth a win. He lost his parents. He didn't want him to lose his home too. お前と私を一緒にするな。私はあの時の選択を一度だって後悔したことはない。Gonna adore how they handle these things. Like that slap felt real. It shocked me a little. He wants the best for his brother. He certainly doesn't want him stuck there forever because of him. 手を挙げられたことなんかなかった。そんな兄貴に殴らせちまった。That's realism. He's not full of faint shock and awe at what happened, and he doesn't want them thinking poorly of his brother. He did what he did to make a point. He made him do it, but he loves his brother. フリーレン、俺冒険者になることにしたよ。あいつを追いかける。だから途中までだ。途中まで一緒に行ってやる。Been a while, but we gained a new member for a while, and I personally like the guy. Let's go. Another new town and another new win. So many of you are not going to be able to get it. I'm going to go to the show. 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 This entire scene of Stark now forgetting her birthday, both of them getting upset, how funny she looks when she's angry, and then kicking him because he said that's what men are like. Animating multiple characters moving within one scene. I got the real. Kira no waka jana in the row. Don't end I know dance to no sesh katanga waka na i dagada. I saw gaki nanda. 
For as long as he'll be around, he's already proving to be an interesting character who can push the crew forwards, such as this here, as it's not something I had considered. Mentioned it in the first quarter, but good how they put numerous Himmel statues in various different locations. Real nice to see these two slowly starting to bond more and more over the past couple of episodes, I gotta say. Simple little things like this. Well, that was insanely cute! I can vibe with that, I'm getting older, but honestly I feel the same mentally as I was 20 years ago. Who knows, maybe I'll be 80 and still feel 15 one day. She can be so damn sweet in moments like these, especially since he just spoke of feeling like he's a kid inside. It's fitting. So sweet to then do the same thing to him now as well. It's these little things that can often get me going the most. Her increasing boredom and annoyance at how long she's taking to find a single ring in that mess. Okay, well that's flat out one of the best plot twists, because it's not a huge deal, but it was truly 100% unexpected. So very much magical lore and I love it! How come he's got literally the best reactions in the anime so far though? Visually it's fantastic, but she really blows me away in how she can suddenly turn to action like this and look so awesome doing so. <laughs> the horse is still floating. Putting a lot of effort into the them repairing the wagon scene, collecting wood, cutting it to size, repairing the wheels and so on. This wouldn't be half as funny if we didn't see him physically slyly looking at her to gauge her reaction. So good when a funny scene ends so wholesomely like this. It really was a true bonding experience for them. Also another, because it might signify something more between them one day, as she very likely knew the flower's meaning was eternal love, and of course he didn't, but who knows? The most adorable way to ask for it all! Yet another fully animated montage of gorgeousness! So sweet that she's going out at night, unable to sleep in order to try and find the ring Himmel gifted to her. This episode is so full of sweetness, that reaction because she knows how important that would be to her, even if she doesn't show it. Himmel very likely knowing the ring's meaning and still being happy to gift it to her, and also the incredible animation involved in the whole flying up there scene. So many frames. Oh, that's so lovely! Following up that lovely moment with a lovely look at the whole town. They know the way to my heart. One more win for that gorgeous scenery shot, including a city or a town in the distance. Before I wrap, I wanted to thank the roughly 18 people who joined my Patreon after the first video, the person who left me a big tip, and then the nearly 100 people who subbed. It means the world to me. Darth Weirdo, Mal Liao, Nick Windham, The Element Taylor Wars, Christopher Willis, Emmanuel Gonzalez, Fancy Turtle, Kepan, Minimasher, Marquez, Nazomi, Orkeeper, Otter A. Bodonisi, Steelers, The Epic Commander, Bird Without a Word, Brandon Creer, Brian Bayot, Cameron, Christian Tuasa, Commander Chris, Doggos for Life, Dragonstorm 35, Aaron Winters, Guru Guru, I Am Here, James Tafoya, Your Edvinson, Kevin Alston, Comfoik, Kylie Wub, Lisa Marie Timp, Luis Minito, Magnus, Mr. Mansu, Lightly Winter, Peter Milligan, Ruby Rose, Satakayari, Zion 44, Sean, The 100s, Tiger Lily Warrior, Sumibito, A Joker, Alexander Schwartz, Ali 50, Amadillo, Brainless Ben, 
Ben, Cecilia, Cedric, Cloud Garden, Dante Soul, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Death the Kid 123, Devon, Dragon Defender, Esso, Garrett Vamish, Gibbs, Hope the Lose Ritter, Israel Caldera, Jason Davies, John John, Jaffa 6263, Kelnock, Kevin Nelter, Kevink 102, Knuckle Duster, Kai 158, Kyle Jones, Laxor, Laxus, Liam Gagati, Lifty, Lionel Schultz, Marvin, Matthew Blancet, Michael Lewis, Modivurum, Monty, Mudini, Mr. Firecall, Natsu Dragneel, Nick Monaco, Nick Pell, 1928, Ollie the Mighty, Oliver Smiley Reacts, Oscar I. Lopez, Owen Haloran, Q Flash, Ryan DeVries, Sarcastic Truth, Snow, Stan, Storm 970, TRS, The Danish Muggle, Thrasher 340, Vernon Hogan, Will Sass, Willie Man,